Elephant Pig, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode, a special episode. All of the episodes are special, but this one's like special, special, special. That's like special three times because I have two awesome people here that I that I've been wanting to to pick their brains for a little bit and um and ask them a bunch of questions and they're gonna give me a bunch of answers and I'm excited. So let's get straight to it. Uh, we have Sammy Blends and Steph Cakes in the building. <laughs> Um, before I even ask y'all anything, first of all, I just want to say toast. Cheers. Thank you guys for making it. Hey, sure. thank you Appreciate for having it. Me. You guys are awesome. Yes, so I have to take this little sip. Drinking it straight too, <laughs> but it's all good though. <laughs> so um, feel free, whoever wants to answer first. Matter of fact, let me just direct it first. Who is Sammy Blends? Let the people know. Who is Sammy Blends? Uh, Sammy Blends is Miss Catch Me If You Can. Mm. It's like. You understand, like, I'm always on the go. Like, I'm all about the culture, and it's just, Sammy Blends is an enemy. It's all about the energy that, that, that she lays out. You get what I'm saying? So, I, I feel like she's like a therapist. A therapist? <laughs> she come in and she make you feel good on the way out. <laughs> uh, that's interesting. I never, I never thought of it that way. Yeah, so, catch you know? me if you can. So, that means you be everywhere. You kind of do, yeah, because I felt like I said before off the camera, I, I've caught you in so many random places that I'd be like, oh shit, Sammy's here. By the way, y'all can curse. Feel free if y'all want to curse. Fuck, 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 fuck. Yeah, yeah, oh, right. shit. Oh, get, great. Get all the, get all the fucks shit. out. It's, it's all good. <laughs> but yeah, catch me if you can, slash therapist, slash also <laughs> DJ. Let's not, let's yes. make it clear to everybody, those that might not know, you, you are a DJ. Yes. Correct? Okay. Just making mm -hmm. it clear. Anything else you want to say before? Oh, no. Don't worry, I'm gonna ask you a bunch of stuff. <laughs> so don't worry about this. All right. So talk to me, Steph Cakes. Who is Steph Cakes? Um, Steph Cakes is a gamer, a DJ, a stoner, a vibe <laughs> for the people. Um, yeah, I'm all of that. I'm, 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 I'm nice. Sugar, spice, everything nice. <laughs> we got the therapist. We got sugar, spice, and everything nice. Yo, I love this already. There's a lot of it's toxic. It's, 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 I, I love, I love the personalities. Man. This is, this is dope. Um, so, but just before, before I ask you the next question, you had a name before. Oh my Steph God, Case. Frank. Those that I, I'm not, I want you to say because I still call you that to oh this day. Oh my god, uh, this so, is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> yeah, so I want you to tell the people what the name was before Steph Cakes. Um, it was Caramel Dropper. Wait, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> caramel Dropper. So I was like, did, did, did DJ Caramel no, Dropper? No, I wasn't a DJ, I was Caramel Dropper. This is my um, alter ego back in the days when I used to want to rap. It was just for fun because Kevin Hart was Chocolate Dropper, but he sucked. And I was Caramel Dropper. <laughs> Because I stuck too, so it was like, you know, no. that's what it was. So I would like randomly just start rapping, but it wasn't good, but it was funny. So it was just like... I can never unhear that. Yeah, to this, to this day, <laughs> I, 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 I call it drop up, and, and I'm never, I'm never going to stop because... I was you know, a big Trey Songs fan, so... This one's for the Penny Dropper. Yeah. <laughs> Hello! So, um, do y'all want to explain your names? Is Alright, so Sammy Blends... Specifically, how did you come up with that name? Well, I mean, like, um, a lot of people don't know, like, I've been DJing for, like, damn near uh, 15 years now. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I started back when I was, like, 15, rolling around in the house parties, literally starting, like, from the bottom, from, like, small bars and, like, making my way up and all that. And I was, like, DJ Sammy for, like, literally, like, six years. And I remember I met uh, one of um, Spinderella's interns, and I asked, and he was like, you just going to be DJ Sammy? And I was like, yo, I can't really find nothing that really matches with that, or whatever the case. And then he told me, he said, don't worry about it, it's just going to fall on your lap one day. And literally, like, I kept working probably like a year down the road, and one thing that I started realizing was that, like, I could blend anything. Mm. You give me fucking Slipknot, I could blend it with Mark Anthony, put me to the test. Nice. You get what I'm saying? So I was like, say me, say me. Blend, blend, blender, blends, blends. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's swag. You know what I'm saying? And it just like it took off from there. And I turned into like a whole brand. Nice, nice. I so, like that. Drop them? Well, no, sorry. Not, I'm not gonna call you drop anymore. I'm not gonna call you drop for this interview. I'm not gonna call you drop anymore. <laughs> Steph Cakes. How did that come about? It was actually on Twitter. I was tired of my um, name and 
I literally tweeted, I need a new a new screen name, and this girl wow. said Stuff Cakes. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I like the sound of it, so se me pegó. And we just added a DJ in front of it, and... And now we have Stuff Cakes. Are you still cool with that girl? I'm not, I'm not. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not even that I'm not. I just don't know, like, you know, she's just one of those people that oh, okay. disappeared off. Yeah, of course, we have yeah, a lot of those yeah, in this business, yeah. right? Yeah. So, talk to me. Uh, I, I want to start with you, Stuff Cakes. What was what was your your come up like? What was the come up when when did DJ become something that you you took seriously? And I'm gonna ask you the same thing. It was when my friend my my best friend Flo had a game night at Altus. It was at Marinello first, and we were there every Wednesday like religiously. And then they moved to Altus, and it was her one year anniversary. For those that don't know Altus. Dykeman, no, all to Washington Heights, but I know, like, right between Washington Heights yeah. and Dykeman, yeah. Okay. So she had her game night, it was her one year anniversary, and she's like, um, I want you to DJ. I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, I want you to DJ. I'm like, girl, you know I don't, like, I always had the apps on the phones and the tablets and stuff, so I used to just play around with that, but I always had the ear. And then my, I, my iPads always had, like, playlists which would be like our crazy. Yeah. So um, she's like, yeah, just do it. Like, you already know everybody and, and you're going to be fine. Bones is going to help you. Shout out to DJ Bones. Big shout out to DJ Bones because Good I'm not going to say that without him, I wouldn't be here. But without him, it would have been a longer process for me. Great he person to learn from. He helped me with everything. Yeah, I, went, I went to his house like four days that week and um, he gave me music on my laptop and that day was a movie. Like, it was packed top to bottom twerk and twister was crazy and then after that date i people were hitting me up like yo are you available are you available are you available and i'm like oh shit like <laughs> <Seriously>? <laughs> yeah. yeah i was like shit but at the time i was working full-time at at&t and they wouldn't give me weekends off like you know i had to still work full-time with them and i was coming into work looking like a zombie and they weren't happy but luckily my manager at the time shout out to tiffany she knew like she saw it she saw like my, my love for music, my passion for the entertainment industry. And like when I told her that um, I wasn't gonna go back to work, she understood. So I was just like, all right, I guess this is serious. Well, it was my dad actually that gave me the green light cause I, I spoke to him about it first. I'm like, look, I'm thinking of taking this DJ stuff serious and quitting my daytime job. And he's the type, my dad's strict. He's the type to be like, no, you need a good job. You need uh, benefits, you need this, that, that. So I'm already prepared for him to be like, no, like don't do that. Like you need security, la, 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 la. But he was like, look, you already went to school. You did everything you had to do. If that's what you think you could survive off, go ahead, do it. And I was like, oh shit, <laughs> oh shit. So it's lit. I, I was off work. It was my birthday week. I took that week off from work and I called. I'm like, yeah, I'm not coming back. And Peace. five, six weeks later, <laughs> here we are. So that's kind of how I and, and, and we're gonna And we're going to get more into the, the awesome things that you're doing now. Um, Sammy Blends, what was the come up like? Yo, you, you know, I'm going to tell you something that nobody knows. Uh, like you get please, I look big. We get the exclusive. Let's so go. So I'm going to give you the exclusive. So nobody knows, before I even ever started DJing, I used to, like, be in the dance world. Oh, yeah? Like, yeah, I'm talking about, I really thought that one day I was going to be a Jabberwocky. Like, I had my heart set up on it. I love the Jabberwocky. Like, it was really a thing. Like, I was really, like, doing battles, choreography, the whole nine. So coming around when I was, like, 15, then I started, like, uh, stumbling about, like, in the house parties in the Bronx. They were going crazy at the time. Like, yo, the freaking house parties was, like, uh, better than the clubs. It was, a, it was a vibe, but it's also a dangerous vibe. No, right. Like, you get what I'm saying? So, so I was like, yo, I started getting a tour, and I started being like, yo. Yo, like, I think I want to do this or whatever. So I started rocking with, like, this little group of people that used to do parties. And um, my uh, my mom's, um, you know, not too many people know my story, but my grandma raised me. But when my mom's came around or whatever, she had got me this laptop or whatever. So, you know, I was like, yo, I got the laptop. I hit up one of my homies that was a DJ at one of the house parties. I said, yo, I want the programming. Mm. Like, I want to play around with it. So then... Um, I had my people's already had some speakers or whatever, and the crew was like, yo, instead of us hiring a DJ, because you got mad music, why you don't just DJ the party? Literally, kind of like how you stumbled about it. So, um, literally, my people's came, they brought me the virtual DJ software. That's where I started to virtual yeah. DJ. Literally, <laughs> plugged it up to the laptop, I said, how do you use this shit? They was like, look, this is a sync button, these numbers, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. They gave me the rundown, literally, that same night I DJed my first party. 
Nice. So, it, just to be clear, we, you guys both kind of started DJing by accident. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you gotta appreciate that. Yeah, because I, even before all of that, Frank, I used to, we were practicing yeah. at the station when I, I was not even thinking about being a DJ. Like, it was just a hobby on my, whenever I had, like, you know, some spare time, so. Yeah. Right. That, and, and that, I definitely could attest to that. Absolutely. And Steph, you should just be around and mm -hmm. just, yo, Frank, uh, Absolutely, and and I, it's amazing how far things have gone. Yeah, and, and, and you gotta kind of like pat yourself on the back for that. For absolutely. So now let's talk about your influences, like people that influenced you to go in the, in this direction. Oh, uh, like top DJs? Yeah, like who? It, it doesn't even necessarily have to be DJs. It could just be anybody that influenced you to get to this point. Like they, somebody that you keep in the back of your mind. Like yo, this person influenced me. Oh, my freaking icon. My icon is Prince. Okay. I am like a Prince fanatic. Like, his whole aesthetic. Rest in peace. Like, who he is, yes. That's probably one of like my lost uh, dreams because he did pass and stuff like that. But um, on a DJ note, um, who really inspired me is this girl. Um, her name is DJ Caper. I, if I'm not mistaken, I don't want to say it wrong. I think she's from like uh, the UK. Or whatever the case okay. may be, I used to like like when I first first started, I used to watch her videos like nonstop, and like she used to smash it on turntables and the whole nine, and just the way that she would chop it up and order. And I was like, yo, I really want to get deeper into that. Um, definitely. Then I started doing more of my research. DJ AM, rest in peace. Rest in peace. As yes. well, he was he was a showstopper. Oh yeah, he he's like everybody. He yeah, absolutely. Monster with the blends too. Oh, all types different. of different. Like his ear was so eclectic that people never knew what the hell was coming next. Nah, for sure. So I definitely pay homage to that. Um, but of course, you know, I'm a huge big punk fan, you know, from the BX shot to the BX. Feel me? X to the death. You hear me? For sure, absolutely. <laughs> so I d I didn't want to cut you off. Is there anybody you wanted to name? Oh uh, no, no, I'm good. No? Man. Okay, so influences for you? For me, um, Raven, the photographer. Okay. She like her story. I read it. She did an interview one time, and I read it, and her story was just like, I'm like, damn, I could do that. That that's when I was like considering quitting my job, taking this serious, and she had just quit her job and and took photography full time. So once I read her shit, I was like, wow, like I could definitely do that. Like she's from the Bronx, I'm from Yonkers, like you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. right next to us. So it's like what? it's possible like to to follow your dreams and yeah, you know, take, take that off. Leap. And that as far Absolutely. and then DJ wise, I'll say my peers, people like you, Rick Rock, who I used to go to all his parties and, and stand next to him and just watch. Like He's watch a him beast. kill the party. Big shout out to Rick Rock. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, my peers are my biggest influence for sure in the DJ nice. world because I have so many DJ friends and Back then, it's been a while, but back then we used to really link up and like have sessions and fuck around and trade music and you know back and forth and just catch a vibe and and that's I I enjoy that like I had fun doing that it, 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 I learn from them they learn whatever they want from me the the music part is like fun everything everything was so much fun when we did things like that so we all that, grew up. <laughs> Yeah, and that's what it comes down to, yeah? Yeah, so definitely my peers. They're like, yeah, my biggest influence. And I absolutely. Um that as you guys you guys all, all of my peers, all the the whole DJ community, you mm -hmm. know, I learn I learn something from each person. Mm -hmm. You know, it might not be something technical, it might be something like aesthetic or you know, etc. Situations, yeah, like, you know, absolutely. Related, like you learn mass shit from other people. Yeah, um I I feel like in the last five years, the DJ game has changed so much. Um, one of the, obviously, one of the, the, the things that has changed, I feel like there's a, a, a influx of, this is corny to say, let me know if this is corny. She Jays, I don't like saying that. She Jays, yeah, and that ain't it. So, 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 so women, women, women in the DJ, cause I've heard that before, She Jay, and I'm just at whatever. But anyways, but I, I've seen a lot more women DJing now. So now I wanted to know what was your take on that and why do you think this is happening now? We'll start with uh with Sammy. Now yeah, I feel like um 
With my mentor, uh, shout out to DJ Mello, by the way. That's, that's the one that actually mentored me. He took me under the wing uh, and he really helped me evolve my craft. Um, when he took me under the wing, he looked at me and he said, I want to help you evolve to be a DJ. Like, not, not a female DJ, not, not, not anything, not a DJ from the Bronx. No, you're gonna, I'm gonna evolve you to be a DJ. So I kind of feel like being a female DJ and us just being pinpointed to just being female DJs, it goes against the culture. Mm. Because DJing is a culture, you understand? It's not binary. It's not like, you understand, we, we don't got to put no labels on it. No, like no set can be replicated. You get what I'm saying? All of us, we do what we want whenever we hit those turntables. So like, it's like seeing female DJs really being, um, you know, like, like coming into the game and kind of like centering themselves around being just a female DJ and not trying to break that barrier and hit the next level to really like, nah, like I want to go full force with this and taking their time. You get me to learn this craft and, and bust they ass and, and, and be hard on themselves and really do it 100. You know, it's kind of like bittersweet because I do meet a lot of women. I mean, I'm pretty sure you can agree that it's kind of like they look at it like this is just another port for me to mm -hmm. get noticed. And it's disrespectful to the culture because, I mean, you guys better than anybody for how many years y'all been in the game. Y'all know how much blood, sweat and tears this shit takes. This shit's not easy. Thanks. Especially to be successful in it. You get what I'm saying? So then there's also the, the, the females that you meet that is kind of like they're really hungry, but also, you know, um, it's centered by sex mm -hmm. because that's the industry that we work in. So it's kind of one of those things that um, I feel like what needs to happen is that the whole female DJ title just needs to be taken away and it just be DJ. I mean, that's my personal opinion. Okay. You get what okay. I'm saying? I respect that. Absolutely. So uh, I want to ask you the same question, of course. Why do you think there's way more women in the DJ game now than before? I'm going to piggyback off what she said. I definitely think that some girls see it as just another lane to just kind of sneak in. and Because you could definitely sneak your way into this career and, you know, blow up just by how you look. Yeah. So, um... This is the times we live in right now, unfortunately. So you just gotta push through. So okay, I I I wanted to 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 pick your brains. Well, obviously I've been picking your brains for for the interview so far. But as uh, and I just want to say like I I agree with what you guys are saying as far as like it shouldn't be just female DJ. It should just be DJs. But I also understand and maybe I don't know if you guys agree with this, but this is a unfortunately is a male dominated industry it's not 50 50. Mm -hmm. like let's be realistic um have you guys encountered and i don't want to turn this into a men bash, bashing session but have you guys encountered men that perhaps don't look at y'all the same because y'all do they're like eh, that's a girl so i i ain't really like jacking it like and how do you guys how do you guys react in those situations and we'll start with it um i'll I'll say I, I got, maybe I'm, I'm blessed. I never really experienced that. Maybe once or twice, but I really did, it didn't phase me because I can't remember it, but I'm sure it has happened. I think if anything, the promoters are more like, like that, like, oh, female DJ, ah, ah, like, cause I've definitely experienced that with promoters too. So the DJs, no, I feel like all the DJs. Well, I'm not specifically talking about DJ. I'm just talking about men in the industry, period. Like, yeah, I mean. Men that perhaps they see you like, oh, you a DJ? Uh, you know? I want to say it has happened. I just can't, like, it didn't phase me. So I can't really just, I can't, it didn't phase me. I don't care. Like. I respect it. <laughs> Absolutely. <Jamie. laughs> no, um, well, I mean, for me, it's a little different, especially because I am an aggressive woman. I'm openly gay. You get what I'm saying? And the whole gay thing just really became a little more okay in the industry. You get what I'm saying? Um, so just dealing with that day in and day out, I'm already automatically looked at a little different. And then being a woman on top of it, so walking into a lot of buildings um, right before hopping on set, you know, now it's different because I've worked very hard to get to this point in my career. 
like I can say it has not been an easy ride and I'm nowhere near same way none of us are nowhere near where we see um, our peak yeah. you get what I'm saying um, but you know always walking in it'll kind of be a up and down kind of look a side so eye, a chuckle you know I don't let it phase me because I've been blessed and fortunate enough that my family has always embraced me for to allow me be, to be me so you know I have a different head on my shoulders um, you know, and I don't get frustrated with men or any of that. Like, I don't have a hate for men. <laughs> oh, shit. Don't get me wrong. You get me? Um, and I'm, I'm a woman. You get me? Uh, but that's why I've always made it a big thing for myself to constantly be as hard as possible I can on myself to practice, to learn turntablism, to get better at emceeing, to, you know, you see me out a lot of yeah. the time and stuff like that. And, you know, I went on a little vacation for a little bit, but I had to get in tune. You get what I'm saying? But all those points of time that I take, even being in the building, listening to other DJs because we're all different, is I take that as a learning experience. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? So I'm very, very hard on myself when it comes down to it so that I can allow the turntables to speak for themselves. Do you guys feel like you have to work twice as hard as Absolutely. the male DJ? Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. How do you how do you how do you guys maneuver in situations like that? Like for example, you said, "All right, it don't phase me. You just keep doing what you do," and then you say you work twice as hard, right? So you work harder. So it's 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 kind of like at a disadvantage already. But I respect that you guys were able to even up the odds because at the end of the day. Look where you guys are at this point. And I know there's so much further to go. Absolutely. So it leads me to my next question. Um, where, If there was one thing in this industry that you guys, in the DJ game, that you guys would like to change, what would it be? If you had to pick one, say. Oh, y'all got to think about it? Yeah. No, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> I thought that was going to go first. Sam, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Saving the culture. <laughs> mm, I got to drink that out again. Saving the culture. <laughs> we gotta save the culture. If we're in trouble. Yo, but I, I and, and I want you to elaborate before I share my thoughts about that. But go ahead. I feel like what we do is art. You get what I'm saying? We get records and we deliver them. You get me? We're the ones that we really push to make a superstar and make sing-alongs happen because the way that we project these records and we make people feel them. You could connect the iPod in a club. Is anyone gonna sing, dance? Is anybody gonna do that? Is anybody really gonna feel that energy of that record to create that moment and us literally put it together in a story to make people forget about their day in and day out? What we do is we are artists and I feel like it's gotten so cluttered by being behind artists that people lost the actual like view of what DJing really is. And it's just now it's really on some plug and play kind of thing. And I, I hate it. I hate it. I feel like, yo, like if you're gonna do this, you gotta do it. You get me? Yeah. Take me over that, bro. <laughs> You want to say something? Yeah, I mean, everything's for the gram nowadays. So it's like you could fake that you're DJing and here comes a big brand coming to try to like use you for something you know it, it, it just be little stuff like that like i think we got we saw a lot of that going on during the pandemic a lot of fake djing a lot of fake producing a lot of fake stuff going on just to make it seem like you're a talented person and the whole thing is a scam so um I, i'll share this quick story with you guys um there was i knew i knew things were going really bad when and, I, and i'll give you the details i don't give a shit um i knew things were going really bad when i had this gig for youtube i was super excited i was like yes i'm gonna dj for youtube corporate money that bag you know what right, I mean? right, right. they always got the bag and then um i had it locked in and everything and then the last minute they hit me i'm like hey we're going in a different direction we're going to use a different dj and then when i did my research to find out who the dj was it was Fucking Tanache, the artist. Singer. I was like, since when did she start DJing? <laughs> and I lost a gig because of that. So then and and ever since that point, ever since that point in my life, I said, you know what? Either you sink or you swing. You gotta accept the way that it's going. And unfortunately, the culture is what the culture is. So you could be the best person scratching. You could be the best person blending. You can be the best this, the best that, but at the end of the day. 
It don't matter. It's a, it's a popularity contest. It's a popularity contest. Literally. Oh, and, and and unfortunately, it is what it is. But you, it, it is, it's like I said, either you sink or you swim, right? Because you can just bitch about it all day and become one of those, I'm pretty sure we all know, those bitter old DJs that's like, oh. bro, back in my day, this is what a real DJ is. Oh, my and a God. fake DJ. And... You don't use headphones, so you're a fake DJ, and you're like, you know, you can either be that, that, or you can just keep pushing your brand adjust. and finding creative ways to adjust to the times. So I still didn't get the answer from you. If there's one thing you could change, or maybe you agree with what Sammy said. One thing I would change. Drinking this straight. I don't think I would change. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I'm gonna just agree with her. That whole fake it till you make it, and they making it. <laughs> they <laughs> yeah, that's the perfect way to say. It. Can you say that one they, more time? And then I got a drink tonight. Fake it till you make it, and they making it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, like I, I ain't even gonna, I ain't even gonna get too controversial. I should, but I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till my time to speak. No, go ahead. But I had did, I had did some, uh, some competition way back when, right? Okay. That was during COVID and shit. So they kind of, they kind of, uh, they put me against somebody online. But the, the DJ competition, online. yeah, yeah. Okay. The DJ competition had nothing to do with DJ. It had to do with records. I'm going to ask you, sir, how many hard drives do you have full of music? Man, listen, I got laptops full of music. I just, <laughs> just laptops and laptops so full of music. So depending on where you're going to go work and the atmosphere that you're going to go play for, sometimes sense. you got to yeah. Change around crates yeah. and all because it's impossible for us to walk around with all our music. Yeah. I lost because I didn't have a record. <laughs> Had nothing to do with DJ, but the record was that important. You know, a lot of a lot of times I'm pretty sure you guys have gotten this in the club too, like people requesting shit thinking oh that you're God. a jukebox. Right. So I, I real quick I wanna I wanna know what you guys think about that. And how do you guys handle requests? Uh how do you how do you what what's the if there's a way if there was DJ etiquette? Mm -hmm. And and I know your answers are gonna be different. How do you handle requests? What's what's the best way for a DJ to handle requests? It depends. It depends how they're requesting. Cause like this past weekend, I had I wasn't even DJing. Rod was DJing, but I saw Rod two, Yeah. Shout out to Rod Avon. Big big shout out. Two girls came up to him with their phone. In the in the yo. Oh my god. And he sees it and he's like, I right. like you know he just ignores it and they're still there. They're just waiting. Stop yeah. Holding it. So I see it, so I grab my phone and I wrote this. Oh my god, you saved it. You ain't shit, you saved Man, what is it. it? <laughs> you saved what you said? It. Unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, I know that's what fucking it said, hilarious. It said um request fifty dollars. And, and they they stay quiet after they that. Left. They left. Of course, that's how that's how so then I showed and Rod was like, what happened? Then I showed him what I wrote and he started laughing because yo, like Bro, read the. They were asking for the real some shady. <laughs> <laughs> nothing against the song. No, uh, nothing, nothing, yeah. nothing, read the rules. Yeah, read the rules. Read the rules. And people, people don't care, yo. Like I could be playing the illest the real bachata set, and everybody's dancing, and somebody would come up and be like, "I want to hear some trap, like right now, like play it right now." And so yo. I want to get your, 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 your opinion on that. Promoters, well. the promoters be doing that shit too. Some, yeah. Yo, and I'll be like, I'll be yeah. like. <laughs> I'd be like, I play this fucking song and they stop dancing, I'm disconnecting because now you fucking me up. Yeah. And like, everybody looks at you like, bro, what are you doing? Yeah, you paying me to do it, like give a service. You and understand it, what I'm saying? Mind your business. And it's all and it's automatically uh your fault. No bro, matter I what. I, I hadn't even this happened um on Sunday. I hadn't even cut finished connecting my stuff and the bottom oh already my. came up to me asking me to play Rochi. It happens. I'm it happens. You, know, you, you need I haven't even played yeah, the song. And, and, you yo, know? you stand next to the DJ, they see you set up and they'll come up to you like that. I'm like, I haven't even played a song. Shut up, just letting you know. I'm like, what? Like, nah, but you know what gets me, and I know you could agree, right? Yeah, you already know the girls that come up, right? They show them the titties, mm -hmm. they come up, they touch their face. <laughs> My love! K 
can you? And I just be like, no, mommy, twenty dollars. I got you. Look how beautiful you are. Give me twenty dollars. Come on. I don't even be asking for money sometimes. It's just it has to be the way you ask. Like if you're asking for something that will go, like I'll play it. But like, now the pay the rule. The approach too. Yeah, like, it's, you know it's what all about the approach. Cause like, I don't mind playing requests. Yeah. If you throw a little money, even better. If it, if it makes sense. Yeah, if it makes sense. My ideal way for somebody to ask for a song is. Hey, I would like for you, when it makes sense, can you play this song? It doesn't have to be now, whenever you get the chance. You know what I mean? Instead of the... Oh my God. <laughs> you oh know, my God. And, it gets, and it gets very aggressive, but I, I want to I switch gears a little bit. And I want to hit y'all with a surprise left. Do you guys find it hard to maintain relationships? And I'm talking about like, with a significant other in this line of work. It really depends. It depends who you're dating. Like, you know, I've dated people that are in the nightlife, like not in the nightlife, but like in the in our industry. Okay. And they're just as busy, so sometimes it makes sense. But it's all about trust at the end of the day. Like, if you trust your partner, then you have nothing to worry about. It looks like you know what I'm saying? Like it looked like she wanted to say more, but yeah. Sammy, go ahead. Well, um, in prior relationships, or whatever the case may be, I'm real like I'm real head on when it comes to my career, and I'm like straight, straight from the like that. I feel like we ever even go from somewhere, I straight up be like, my career comes first. You will always come second. You will never come before that. So as long as you understand that, then we can proceed forward and any of that. So that's just with me disciplining myself. I got a dream today, yo. Y'all got a dream. Yeah, I feel like that's not. That's I don't, like, you don't, even, I don't even have to say that. Ooh. Like when I'm dating somebody, I don't even have to say that. I expect your business and yeah. your career to come first too. Yeah, but and when you come up with expectations like that, you could get let down, right? Because if you don't tell it from the jump, like I agree with you here, where you got to say it from the jump. Yeah. This is what it is. This is what it is. Yeah, ain't. but you could say it in the jump all you want. The we're relationship, still gonna feel away. Not, but not even the, you're not even they're gonna feel some type of way. The relationship changes, like you know, it might get better, it might get worse. Like it, 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 they might understand and still, you know, give you a hard time, or they still, they're not gonna understand and then they just don't care. Like, well, how about this? One wrong move, you might not make it. That's it. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta be aggressive on yourself sometimes, especially in this line of work, because at the end of the day, like this, this game, this is like a life's work. We're not gonna be young forever. You understand what I'm saying? With this moment that we have right now doing this interview, we're never gonna get this back. You get me? So it's just like your life's work. I'm I'm not gonna allow somebody else to ever freaking tarnish that. Yeah. Cause if, if you if you die, guess what's gonna happen? They yeah, probably I mean, I don't I don't even date people that could possibly even like fuck up my career. Like I don't even yeah. there's no chance in hell that I'm gonna even give somebody they, they're already giving you the power. red flags yeah oh, right you stay yeah you stay as, 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 as soon as that's like no is nice. so so you guys still didn't answer the question though do you guys find it hard to maintain a relationship in the in this line of work yes or no again it's all about trust with that person because i've been in long relationships you know oh but like with the time you mean as well like well, no i just mean like like, I mean, right. I think if you're gonna maintain a, you have to maintain. Yes, yeah, so you're talking maintain, about like yeah, over we're time. We're talking about over time. Yeah, I mean, I don't think is if the foundation of the relationship is you know stable, is solid. Then I, for me, I don't have no issues. Yeah, I feel like you gotta be with somebody that kind of like appreciates the time that they can have with you. Because sometimes there'll be an hour really quick that you can have with them, and then you gotta go on the go. And sometimes it could be a whole two days. You get what I'm saying? I, uh, they gotta understand, cause I've definitely dated yeah. somebody that like. I mean, yeah, it's tough. My days off, they wanted me to be with them at all times, and I'm like, yo, I still have to like, even on my days off, I still have work. Like, I this still got a network. Yeah, this is it's nonstop. Right. So like, they wasn't feeling that. So I'm like, you know what? Fuck. <laughs> 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 and, 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 I, and I wasn't, I didn't feel bad about it because I knew that, you know, if I had felt bad and I had stayed with that, it would have, my career would have, listen, let me tell you, I broke up with that person, the next day I got the job at Power. Would you look at that? That's what's up. Because I was off from work and I went to go 
on my day off to like network and stuff like that. Next thing, next week, I'm working at Power. And there you go. That's it. That's it. That's a beautiful <laughs> story. <laughs> I did what I had to do for myself. Yeah, and and that's the most important thing at the end of the day. You so know? we're gonna cheers to yeah. Salud. Cheers. Salud, 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 guys. Salud. Yeah, Talk yeah. to me about Branson. Mm. What's up with that? What, 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 what's this bottle that we have in Shout front of us? Tennessee. You know, we're sipping that Branson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that was a uh, shout out to Renee. Renee was the one that reached out to me. Big um, shout out to Renee. And and made it happen. I guess you know they saw my work ethic at, and 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 they felt that it, it fit what Branson represents and um, what is it like three years later we're still I'm still with them so yeah I mean I love it's it a big win. I like what it represents is. you know it's a it's a pleasure being a part <laughs> of it. <laughs> 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 no I'm just I said a lot of quotable fire shit so I'm just like yo like hey I got it's an honor to like you know work with Fifty and and you know and Renee and all of them, the pe all the DJs that are part of the Branson team, shout out to all of them. Like, it, it really is a pleasure. And, and just to be them. clear, Branson is a cognac. Correct. And we also have Le Chem de Ra, which is champagne. And, um, yeah. Is that cognac infused as well? No, 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 that's champagne. This is just the cognac. We have the VSOP, we got the um, other regular one. This one's the Royal and then the black one, which is the one that gets you fucked up. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I drink enough of that. I'm gonna get messed up too. Yeah, no, right. yeah, no. Nah, trust me, it will Regardless. definitely. So, um, what's your what's your favorite part of being a DJ slash like entertainer? Because I like to, I don't like to just say DJ. I like to say, I like to call myself an entertainer. So, what, what's what's your favorite part? Whoever wants to go first. The people. Yeah. All right, but you gotta be more specific than that. Like, <laughs> it's gotta... just like the way that people like how happy people be, like how you make them feel, like after when they come up to you, like oh my god, you did such a good job, I had so much fun. The DMs after, oh my god, I had so much fun. I love when you did this. Like that's definitely one of my favorite parts. Okay. You know, my, watching all the toxic shit behind the DJ booth, <laughs> you don't believe how many people I don't seen the shit smacked out of them in the cup. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I mean, like, then, you know when you said the single ladies and then her man woke up. Uh huh. <laughs> we, we see a lot of toxic things. Do you guys have any toxic or or, or memories that you want to share? Like, yo, this was a crazy memory that happened while I was DJing. I've seen people this? smashing in the club. Oh, like hooking up in the club. I've, I've, I've seen that. Absolutely. I thought, I thought that was crazy. Um, I've had, I, I've seen like three girls making out at the same time. It was just like, wow. And I was just there like recording it at the same I time. Cause I was like, yeah, like I ain't joining y'all. Cause that's like mono right yeah, there. Way like, right. I'm looking like, yeah, like, <laughs> like, yeah, we lit, but like that was, Definitely that was, that was, that was yeah, hurting. like. Some kind of ST something there, you know what I mean? So I don't know if y'all have like a memorable moment, like damn, like this, this was wild. Some titties. And it doesn't. That, that, that's awesome. Yeah. Some titties. Some nice. That, I seen some nice titties. Before. That's fire. That's fire. How do you have something like that? Or does it have to be? Sexual? Oh no, I mean, I, so I mushed. I'm sorry, man. No, no. In Miami, I, I mushed the shit out of some chick uh, because she tried to kiss me. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> nah. It was like doing too much. No, yeah, I thought that like she was trying to request a song or something, so I'm like being nice. I was in a great mood. Uh, I'm in Miami. It's fun. <laughs> that bitch, she tried to grab my face. Oh, damn. <laughs> she tried to grab my face, and I was like, whoa. Mm -mm. Oh, she had to learn the hard way. Now, considering the success that you guys have had in your career, is there anything that the current you would like to say to the younger you? Is there something... That you guys would like to like, oh, like, damn! If I could have spoken to myself, the younger me, this is what I would have said. Um, I would, I would definitely look the younger me in the eyes and say, you got a long road ahead. Just don't let up. It's all gonna pay off one day. Trust me. Like, it would definitely be that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Staff cakes. Damn! What would I tell younger me? I would tell her. Yeah, like you got a lot of memories going through your mind right now. <laughs> I'm just, I, it's just, I, I wouldn't, I love my journey. I don't think I would, I don't know what I would tell my younger self because um, I really did everything that I felt like I had to do. Like everything that I wanted to do, I did it. 
my way. And um, damn, what would I tell myself? Maybe to save more money or just like, <laughs> maybe I mean, yeah, I could tell myself. Yeah, 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 invest in myself maybe sooner in my wardrobe. I wish like my I, I took better care of like my my look earlier in my career. Um, cause I was never one of those type of girls to go like all glammed up. Like I came to work, I didn't come here to look sexy for you guys, cause y'all not paying me to look sexy. So <laughs> if y'all want me to look hey. sexy, I can make it happen. But you know that's a different price. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, because now nah, these promoters they be like, yo, can you send me a video right now? You, I'm, bro, I'm still home. Like I just woke look, up. Yeah, I'm looking just got that like you guys. Y'all put a hat on and y'all good. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying. Hey, right, your My eyebrows are looking crazy. Like no, nah, I need time to look present. Presentable, yeah. and y'all want these videos, and I'm just like, damn. So I don't know. I guess probably like invest in my look earlier. Um, no, nah, yeah, I did what I had to do. I'll be like, good job. Good, no, that's, <laughs> good job. That, that, that's keep, very... keep doing your thing. You're doing what you have to do. That, like, don't that... give up. I never planned on giving up, but just keep doing it. Keep going hard. That's 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 very uh, fulfilling. Now I want to ask you guys, what's what's the goal? With DJ, what do you what what what's the goal? Like, what do you guys see yourselves in perhaps five years, ten years? Like, what do you guys want to get out of this game? Um, you know what's crazy? I answered this question before. I answered this question before, like six years ago, and I don't think my answer is ever gonna change. The end game for me, uh, for Sammy Blast, I want immortality. I want a story that. People can't distinguish whether it was real or fake. Kind of like something mythical. Like, you get what I'm saying? I want a story that's so inspiring that it, 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 somebody can look into it and it sparks something in them and it's able to continue the evolution of what this culture is supposed to be. Honestly. Like, I, I really love what I do. Dope. Yeah, man. See, y'all keep saying shit that's just like, damn, I got to drink that. Yo, and Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> Step cake starts me. Um, what do I want to leave? Not what do you want to leave, but what do you want? Or what do I want? What do, you, what do you want from this? What do I want from this? I want to leave a good story behind too, for real. Like a, a good legacy. I want to make my continue to make my family proud. Um, yeah, it's all about the legacy, like Steph cakes. You're gonna hear the cakes, and you're not gonna order. Like you're not gonna always think about cakes. Like sometimes you'll be like, "Oh, are you talking about like the actual cakes or like uh, stuff cakes?" Like that right. kind of thing. Interesting. Okay, that's dope. So, what words of advice do you guys have for upcoming DJs? Like, if if an upcoming DJ came up to you guys, particularly a female DJ, mm -hmm. it came up to you guys and was like, "Yo, like." What's your advice? Like, how can I get in this game? What, what should I do? Like, I don't even know where to start. Like, be yourself. What do you guys? Oh, there you go. go be ahead. yourself. Go practice every day, cause that's something that I need to start doing again. Like, I remember, <laughs> I remember, I remember the beginning. Like, I used to practice every yeah. day, and that just really it, it makes a difference. Like, even when you go a few days off without DJing, and then you DJ again, it's like, yo, yeah. you, you get rusty. Yeah. Like. So definitely be um, yourself and practice every day, but heavy on the be yourself because it's like you mentioned earlier, like nobody has the same set, nobody can do the same shit that you do. Even if I give you the same songs that I'm using right now and to, for you, you're going to play it completely different. Yeah. Right. So stick to being yourself always. Nice. Yeah, uh, absolutely. No, I'm definitely piggyback off for that. Um, and I would just say like, Along with, uh, you know, it, this being like a 24-7 game of what you put into like learning the craft. I would also say sit down and also learn the business portion of it as well. Mm, heavy. Because one thing about it is that not only learning the music business, you also need to learn the business world. Because we don't, we don't have the opportunity of like, you know, people come to us and they just want to work with us. No, we got to develop our entire brand and yep. set everything at the stone for us. You get what I'm saying? So um, definitely learning the business, learning corporate business, and definitely learning people. Get that LLC nice and early. Yes. It's worth it. Yes. Big like, facts. Absolutely. Definitely. So it's kind of like, you know, like this is a game like you can't lack. Like like you said, you go a couple of days off, it's like you cannot lack. This is something that, like I said, it's our life's work. Not only that, that a few days you slack off, bro, somebody's ready yep. to come take your yeah. spot. Yeah. They ready. They listening to you. They taking your advice, practicing every day. 
they being they're creating their 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 own machine and the minute that you're ready to take a nap somebody's gonna jump over yeah. you. Yeah. You know, never get never get comfortable. That pillow. Mm-hmm. Big facts. I I um I, I do wanna stress that the knowing the business. Um, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people they they, they they get paid and then they spend it all on the bottles, like <laughs> which is ass backwards. And, and you know, at the end of the day, uh, us DJs is is we don't have a DJ's union where we have our 401ks waiting for us. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's extremely important for us to to, to 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 know what to do with the money that we're making. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, understand that we can't, you can be a teacher at 60 years old. You can't be a 60 year old DJ in these clubs. Right. You know what I mean? So there's something that you have to really take into into consideration. And and I'm glad that, that, that you brought that up. Now, before I wrap this up, um, is there anything else that you guys want to speak about, you guys want to bring, like, like you guys want to say before we wrap this up here at Elephant Pig, anything? Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> at DJ oh, Tap Moose. <laughs> Follow me on Twitch, on my gamers, tap in. I be playing Call of Duty. I play 2K. And she's not, yo, she's serious about that Call of Duty life. Tap yeah. in. She, she well. Tap yeah. in. Tap in. I'm here to combine these worlds, the gaming world with the music world. We're going to do something magical. Count on me. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Sammy. Hey, well, you already know this. Be a girl. Let's catch me if you can. DJ Simi Blends. Um, just come see a lot. That's the only way to experience it. Hey. You know what I'm saying? The only, hey. <laughs> the only way to feel it is to see. That's the <laughs> give me your Instagram, man, oh, yeah. Twitter, all that. Yeah, be sure to hit me up on Instagram, TikTok. Um, I'm I'm still getting in tune with Twitter. I need to fix my Twitter crazy. Don't don't even go to Twitter. <laughs> yeah, don't go to Don't even go to Twitter. <laughs> but nah, hit me up on Instagram. That's my main platform. DJ Simi Blends. Double I Z Z N. Absolutely. DJ and Steph Shops. Peaks. Yeah. That's it. On TikTok, on Twitch, on Instagram, not Twitter. Everything. And if you catch her on Call of Duty, good luck, cause she's she's serious about Wild. it. Yeah, I might you out. Shout, shout out to you, Frank. Oh, thank yeah, you. Shout thank out you. Thank you, Val. Big shout out. See, now I gotta drink again. Man. If DJing was just a hobby, I would tell Frank to teach me. I'm like, yo, Frank, teach me. And I remember the caption. I was like, yo, I don't know. I'm gonna make it some way, somehow, so y'all better watch out. And Hello. I stuck to that. And there you go. And Frank's always been like a text yeah. away for anything. So nah, for sure, absolutely. Frank. I'm always a text you never away been for a, You never like been a gatekeeper or nothing like nah. that. Nah, and bro, listen, I'm gonna say this right now. Okay? Frank <laughs> is one of my favorite DJs and I always thank tell you, him that when I see him because he puts on a show. Thank so you. I'm always gonna pay homage to that. I appreciate it, man. Keep but love and respect for you guys and thank you guys for coming out. I hope you guys had a good time here at the Elephant Pick and you know the vibes. We yeah. in and we out. Peace. There you go. I love Francis. <laughs> I love Francis. I'm a business at the end of the day. Like, don't talk to me like I'm some Gucci mama you're picking up from the corner. Like, hey, you see, mom. but that's what that's what I was asking you before. Like, how do you how do you deal with the men in this business that, like, was what's the what if you guys had to speak to once again a female DJ and, and tell them like yo this is how you or even somebody in this industry period but is a female mm-hmm. how do you how, how can you teach them to maneuver like you, what instances have you guys gone through and like how do you how do you maneuver effectively you have to stand your ground on like who you are yep. like you can't let these people cause it could be a guy it could be a girl but you can't let nobody like who thinks they're above you just come and sun you or not even sun you, they can't come disrespectfully. Like, I, I've gone through situations with promoters where I don't like how they speak to me. Well, they're like, oh, hey, ma, hey, love, hey, babe. Like, what? What What makes you feel comfortable? Do you, the, do you promoters? <laughs> they definitely don't hey, tell babe. me, hey, ma, hey, babe. They don't tell me that. How do you handle those situations? So I just, I just leave. I don't respond to it. Like, don't, I don't care yes. if I'm losing money. I don't care. I, I'm good. Like, I don't want to feel uncomfortable. Like, are you already making me feel uncomfortable through text. So how am I going to feel in person when you're like, right in my ear? Hey, babe. Hey, ma. Hey, love. Like, what? Nah, 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 nah. And then they double texting you like, why you not answer me? Because you're being disrespectful. That's disrespectful. No, exactly. Respect me as a brand, not as a fucking, you're, now you're like, what's the word? I don't want to say womanizing, but like, yeah. 
<laughs> the Ali from Abby. Right. Big, big shout out to big shout out to Abby. Shout she, out to she's Abby. my business partner here. Slash and she, bartender. And, and slash bartender Lord. extraordinary. Yeah. Even though I feel like she her, her arms are a little bit heavy, mm. uh, but it's all good though. But anyways, yeah. but I'm I, I, I'm glad that Abby's here because you know I'm pretty sure she deals with the bullshit as well. We could bring it back even more. I remember in the beginning of my DJing journey, um, a promoter from Uptown. I'm not gonna give him no fucking clout. But he a uh, local promoter. He, <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Huh? Yeah, like that. Just <laughs> today, local. So I did. I did him a favor because one of the DJs canceled on him, and I filled in the slot, and he did not pay me. Wow. And oh. it became a game. It really became a game, and it was like, yo, where's my money? I don't care if it was a hundred dollars. That, that's, that's not the point. That's not the point. Exactly. Especially if you're my friend. Like we're we're I consider you a friend. Like we chilled outside the club before. Yeah. Like we've done mad shit. So the fact that I held you down and you gon' he said he gave the money to the other DJ to give to me. So I hit up the other DJ, like, oh yo, where where's the money or whatever? He nah, like, he ain't since one he ain't give me what? The money. Since when does the DJ so now, pay the other so DJ? So now I was like, oh nah, I don't got it. I'm, I'm gonna send it to you. Give me a few, bro. For like two months, I'm chasing him down, and it got to the point where I'm like, yo, keep the money. We good. I really was ready to get people to flip him over and <laughs> take whatever money he has pocket. <laughs> and, On some cartoon shit. Yo. <laughs> like I just don't get it. But yo, know, all right. Let me ask you a question. That promoter. I bet you they're in the same exact place they were yep. three, four years Karma's, ago. I, I let Karma handle it. Right. I let Karma and, handle it. Because, and, there, and there you go. See? But that's just some of the shit that we have to deal with. Because I know, again, I know guys, how, like, when you get paid, how long do you... How long do I what? Do you... How, what's the limit? Like, how long, how many days do you go until you're like... I, know, right? I get paid right then and there. I get paid yeah, before right. I get on the set and then you go, like... There's my money. You see I'm what out. I'm saying? Like, uh, no. Yeah, that's the, that's I, but you have to, but yes. I hate, it's always a story, it's always an excuse, it's always a million things. And sometimes, yo, I don't I don't want to deal, I just want to leave at that point. So I'm just like, fuck it. Yeah, and real, real talk, I'm the type of person that I don't like to stay in the clubs late. No. Like, after, after my set is done, because that's when the, the, the funny shit happens. And then, right. like, you know, people start acting up, and they're drunk, and then, you know, so I like to just get my money so I can get out i'm in this this is a business mm -hmm. yeah so absolutely and 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 but once you have those experiences because we've all had it I've, I've had situations where damn he was funny with the money mm. i know never to work with this person again no absolutely you cut him off and then you don't even go back and forth with them yeah because honestly like, unfortunately sometimes we have to take the l you know and some some people put them on blast and you know you know and what I, I hate i've thought about that let me wow. tell you something you know i'm sorry to cut you you, go, you, go. you know what i hate you know what I hate? You know, like, you know, I've been in this game for a while and stuff like that. You know, at the end of the day, I'm an independent artist. You get what I'm saying? I have not done radio. Uh, I've only done like Shade 45 and stuff like that or whatever the case may be that, you know, if you hit me up, right, and you go to book me, why are you bringing up other people's what, what other people are charging? Oh my yeah. God, I hate that. that what, what, what does that have to do <laughs> yeah, with me? Yeah, hey, no, that's good for them. Like, this is what I charge. Yeah. Like, that, that's what right. it is. Yeah, Gosh. I'm at that point in my career for sure. Right because, because it because it becomes something like, yo, at the end of the day, not only are you hiring a DJ, it's not about us just putting the songs on. You're hiring a brand. Yeah. You're hiring yeah, our they following. Want, they want like you're hiring a free. It's they like hiring a free. People, 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 people come to see us. Yeah. Like we're a show. Like you get what I'm saying? No talk. So it's like, yo, you you wouldn't even believe how many times I'm like, that's great. So why don't you contact them? Yeah. And that's why I know people. Some I, I've I've seen people be like, oh, why you not like outside as much? Because I yo I don't want to deal with some of the stuff that we have to deal with sometimes. It, 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 it's part of the business, unfortunately. But I would also say there's there's a there's a lot of stand up promoters out there too that are about there, yeah. like people that know, like yo. I, I could fuck with this person because this person's always been straight up with me. You know what I mean? Right. And, and and personally, I don't even have a problem with promoters telling me like, yo, this is a slow night. Let's work something out. I rather but that. When, but when you fucking stay quiet to the end of the night or something, like you know what I mean? Like you're trying exactly. to be funny with it. And that's the difference. I think communication is key. It is. Yeah, yeah, and then it's kind of like, granted, if you do have a slow night and stuff like that, like, you know, at the end of the day, respect our business and just come across like, yo, listen, this is what I'll do. Yeah. 
I'm gonna throw you two other dates. They don't yeah, gotta yeah, be the next yeah, yeah. freaking day. Like yeah. you get what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, don't come up disrespectfully because you didn't do your job correctly. Why am I being penalized? No, because we gotta promote. We gotta be promoters too. We gotta be the nah. promoters. We gotta be the model you girls. We gotta be the photographer. We gotta be the model. I don't think anybody wants to be the model. Not the model girl. Get on. We gotta be everything. I don't think I don't think anybody wants to see me in a model girl outfit. Uh, Yo, now nah, right there, I'm hanging it up. I'm hanging it up, Frank. Yo, for real, they be expecting us to do everything sometimes. Yeah. So, so uh, I, I want to ask you guys about that. Like, how do you guys? Because I know how I feel about it. But how do you have you guys ever encountered somebody that was like, yo, so how many people can you bring out? Oh, all the time. Yo, first of all, <laughs> let me tell you something. Being the way that I am, pretty yeah. much a fucking aggressive female, guys be thinking I'm a pimp. Mm -hmm. They straight up come up, yeah. I need you to bring a woman out. I'd be like, mm -hmm. bro, what you think? I just I just got bitches lined up. I hate when they think hey, that. Like, is there just women lined That's up? Exactly. Hey, listen, I need you now. Like, <laughs> at that point, I'm in a different line of business. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah, but look, we, like, y'all want that, but all right, so talk to me nice because now I have to hey, take care of like exactly, exactly, because now I gotta take care of my ladies. I'm not gonna yeah. just bring them out and then, uh huh. Yeah. Yo, but you know what I feel like too, and I, I, I always tell promoters this when they be like, when they be like, what's your rate? And then they be like, oh, and I'll be like, listen, if you do your job and promoting that I'm gonna be in, in the building, I'm gonna do my job in promoting that I'm gonna be in that building. Yeah. That infused together, that's what's gonna make the event. But if you give me the flyer the day before the party, and believe me, who the hell is gonna pop out after that? Mm -hmm. Ja, ja, these bitches, they already hit up all the drug dealers from another go. area. They going somewhere else. You understand what I'm saying? I have a Big question. Fast. Yeah, yeah, I think the videos be working when they be asking us to do it like the the promotional videos. Yeah. Um, I think if it, if they ask for it, I guess it helps in some kind of way. Because why would you keep asking for something that doesn't work? You know? And I, obviously, I can I've tell. Never, I've never seen a video. I've never seen a DJ make a video. And I'm like, I want to go to that. Yeah, party. but you're in, a, you're in a different side of the business. Yeah. You're right. But you know what I mean? So like, I've can, never heard any of my friends see a, like, you know, I haven't heard any, like, I, I can't take any I can't, proof that that works. If if they keep asking for it, then somehow, some way, it must work. I feel I, like they feel our energy through may, the video. Maybe there, there has the to be people. something that works in that. I'm not against it, but it's just like yo, if you it's ask, it's different for you, Frank. Is different. In, in what way? Because you could do the video right now. I'm not gonna do a video like this to tell you to come to my party. Yeah, but it's the same thing like you DJ when you get on a mic and you giving like no. mic presentation and MCing like you building. It's not the same. Yeah, I, 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 I you it's know, I, I, I'm gonna. I know if I do, if y'all want me to do a video to promote your thing, I want to look nice. I want to look inviting, right? True. That's what you're saying. The video True. does. True. I feel like I gotta get paid more for that. Okay. I, I, now I'm giving you a little mini commercial I, for your I, party. I, I I respect it. I I do think it's easier for men because literally all throw I do on is the hat. I throw the chains on. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and no. I'm doing my promo video, so I ain't gotta worry about no makeup. That's why I, 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 I think God I chose this life and not that one. I'm in the same life. <laughs> and no, then, no, because I don't have to put lashes on. I, I mean, no, I don't have. To, I don't got no lashes on right now. No, no I, I'll do it. Like I'll do this. Ooh, my ears ringing. I'll do it. Like you know what I'm saying? I'll do it. But like you want a video for a reason because you. Want. No, but you say like you gotta get up the part. I could just throw on a fitted and the braids and I'm yeah, good to nah. go. See that that's how I feel. Right? You feel what I'm saying? I get it, but if y'all want a video like that, I think DJs, doesn't matter if you're a male or female, should get compensated a little so, bit. So more. You, said, oh, you know, I've never heard of a DJ asking a promoter, all right, well, like, yo, you think you could DJ? Like the, the way that they ask is, yo, you think you could bring people? Like, I never heard of a DJ saying, all right, all right. If I'm gonna, if I, if I gotta work and do your job, then you gotta do my job. You know right. what I mean? So it's never been like the the the, the opposite. <laughs> if that if that makes any sense, I, I hey, this is what it yeah, is. That's hey. why anytime promoters be like, yo, yo, um, you know, do do this, play this right now. I be like, come, come, I'm gonna let you get on my left. <laughs> Go ahead, get on Go the ahead. Stage. <laughs> I can use the break. Do you that. gotta pay me regardless. Go ahead. I'm and, and, and there you go. Is that is that anything? Else? Is that <laughs> before anything? we uh, before I, before we end this, there are some good promoters. Yeah, that's you know, what I'm saying. Shout out to the good promoters that know that are respectful, that are you know stand communicate. Up. Yeah, stand up people like you know they they understand the 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 business. So shout out to to the 
the few, the, the handful. I've been uh, I've been meeting a lot of uh, uh, female promoters too, which I think is dope. I had a whole um, interview about that too, like just straight up female promoters in this game, and they go through similar things that that you guys go through, and. Um, I wanted, I, 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 is this is something that I've always wanted to do. Like, I wanted to bring, I'm always DJing. I mean, I'm always interviewing, all right, fellas in the game, blah, 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 blah. But I, I like, I like getting the, the, the female perspective of this. And I, and I appreciate you guys for, you know, coming, coming in. And is there anything else you guys want to get off your chest? Talk your shit. Or forever hold your peace. Lay that shit out of pick, ladies and gentlemen. Anything you want to get off your chest, Sammy? Anything? I don't know. If not, it's totally fine. I just want to make sure that we got everything. Oh, yeah. don't oh. hit me up and waste my time. <laughs> Please don't hit me up and waste my fucking time. Like, yo, do you know how frustrating that shit is? And then when I tell, when, when, whenever I steer traffic to, because, you know, at the end of the day, um... You know, we self-invested in our brand, so we do have other people that work for us. So it's kind of like people kind of be like, no, but I want to do this with you directly. How much more do you want to do besides me telling you the availability? Like, we'll talk. You understand what I'm saying? Respect my business. Yeah. You get what we'll I'm talk. saying? I, uh, DJing nowadays, like, it's not just are you good at blending music or scratching music. It, DJing is... You have to be a marketing machine. You have to be a promotional machine. Hello. You have to develop Everything. your own aesthetic. Everything. You have it, it's a lot that goes into this. Like and we be tired. Like and then we gotta deal with y'all emotional <laughs> shit too. Yo, I be stressed out sometimes. I be like, yo, you know what the fuck you mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what though, even with all that shit, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. It's like Absolutely. it's 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 I do magic. Too. You're right? I love it. Even with all the bullshit that we gotta deal with, I love it. And I, really I feel like it's the people, yo. Yeah. <laughs> I For love real. it. I don't think I I don't see myself doing anything else. There's like, good, I, there's I, bad, it's a beautiful. I'm not thing. meant to be a rapper. I'm not meant you sure to drop like, it? You sure? <laughs> Oh shit. What was it? Caramel dropper. Yeah. Like, I didn't wanna say it, but yeah, yeah. you said it. Alright, so now I don't even know if this is gonna be the final one, but we're wrapping up. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys for coming. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Right here, bitch. Peace. Peace.